coming from all angles. In fact, the Amnesty International has indicated that it will go to court if this uh, bill is passed into law. And today you're hearing uh, the coalition of the, the group that is against the passage led by uh, Professor Odrigajek, who say they would also be heading to the Supreme Court. It does look like you are not done with your job. There, there's still more obstacles that you need to clear. Well, Michael ends by saying that I drive a hundred thousand dollar car, and so that should my focus should not be on the sexuality of people. Well, your whole job is about getting funds from the aberration of other people, and you think that you have a moral right to talk about something that's a law. I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean. Listen, Michael, Michael, Michael. You reference you reference all persons. You reference Article Seventeen. I, I've, I've said to you on this platform already this evening, don't read the Constitution in bits. Article 17.4. Michael, let me give you an education, please. Article 17.4, the Article 17 that you say says all persons. Go and read 17.4. I've told you, don't read the Constitution in bits. Read it as a whole. Article 17.4 says, nothing in this article that you have referred to shall prevent Parliament from enacting laws that are reasonable, necessary to provide a for the implementation of policies and programs aimed at redressing social, economic, or educational imbalance in the Ghanaian society. When you have people who are born with six fingers, it is not considered, or six digits, it's not considered the norm because it's a one in a million occurrence. The fact that you have individuals who choose on their own to carry out what society does not consider normal, does not mean that we must make it normal. And that is an educational and societal imbalance that Parliament has rightfully passed the law under Article 17.4 to deal with. Go and also read Article 39, the cultural imperatives that have been imposed on the state. So read the Constitution as a whole and don't read it in bits and pieces. And Amanda makes the point that I should go and look at what informs the statistics. Ah, Amanda, you are saying that people's aberration their, 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 ab uh, their abhorrent sexual preferences makes them suicidal because they need help. And you think that we should now accept that aberrant behavior, that, that, that abhorrent practice, and now have to deal with giving them... Why? Is it because you think that that would open a room for you to now do research? But listen, people do research today into pedophilia. People do research into money laundering. People do research into all kinds of vices. It doesn't mean they have to advocate for it. The moment you begin to equate advocacy to research, you've missed the point, Amanda. That can never be the basis of research. Research can never be equated to advocacy. And the moment you do that, I see you've lost the plot. <laughs> okay, so the point we'll make here is this. Amnesty International... And you see, another point Amanda makes, that she's seen a rise in violence. I challenge you, Amanda. And you see, we did this when we had the open session for all of these allies to come into parliament and appear before parliament. We asked them for evidence, evidence of either a job or, or, or a hotel or any discrimination against a person, wrongfully so. None of them could produce an evidence on this show. I'm calling Amanda out and saying she should give us one instance, one, of increased violence against a person because of this bill. Mm. Look, it's easy, to, it's easy to say the things you are saying, but trust me, so long as God gives me breath, I will continue to hold all of you to strict proof because it is clear that the intent behind all of this advocacy is economic. <laughs> Aisha, let us, let us call people out. It is economic. It's about the funding they will receive. Do you, do you, the funding you, have you receive... Do you have proof, Sam? Oh, absolutely. That CDD is sponsored... No, CDD's research, and Michael is here. CDD's research on this bill was not funded from their own. It was funded by donor partners who have an interest in pushing LGBTQ. You should deny it. Amanda's research is sponsored by groups that are pro-LGBTQ. Don't deny this. This, it, it, uh, this is fact. It, 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 so I'm if sorry. people are thinking about the money they get for their research, and for that, they think that parliament should sit down for the innocence of our children to be taken away, 
Why are we going as a country? In, in terms of accent, uh, uh, they cannot be denied. They should state the source accent. of your funding. Okay, I'm challenging you to state the source of your so, funding. M Michael, so, Michael, so, give me a so, second. Uh, I'll, I'll okay, come to you okay. too. All right. Okay. So go ahead and respond in one minute, okay. please. This very state, this very Ghana state we live in today, right? Who, I mean, where are we? Who, who is funding us today? Oh, so, so you are not disputing that you are funded by groups that are interested in LGBTQ. You are not, you are not disputing it. Because we need to call the CDD out on this. The CDD does fantastic work, but on this matter, we will call you out. You asked him to deny or confess, so he's doing that. Michael, go ahead. The state that St. George is a minister, is a member of parliament for, is it not being funded partly by donors? So what is he talking about funding? But you mean to to the parliament is funded to by donors? Was, no, what's the point he made? To go back to the constitutional argument he made, look. No, you should, Richard, let's not run away from your source of funding. Michael, let's establish it. You've not answered my question. Are you funded or not? Michael, can you give him a direct answer? Are you funded or not by pro LGBTQ groups? Allow him to respond. It's a civil society organization. So, definitely, yes. He's not answered the question. He says yes. But no one funder has given us money to go and, and uh, uh, to go out on the limit, advocate. For men to go sleep with men. And I have, we have made that disclaimer so many times. That this issue, for us as CDD, is a human rights issue. You know, this is, this is the way that some judge kind of like to, like to uh, conflate issues and try to turn things around. But anyway, he, uh, we were talking the Constitution to me. So I just want to reference him that if he goes under the directive principle of state policy, and Article 35, if that says 35-4, he says, the state shall cultivate among all Ghanaians respect for fundamental human rights and freedom and the dignity of the human person. And then he moves on to, uh, to uh, fight. And he says, the state shall actively promote the integration of the people of Ghana and prohibit discrimination and prejudice on the grounds of place of origin, circumstances of death, ethnic origin, gender, religion, creed, or belief. So when he's making the constitutional argument to me that I do not get what the constitution is saying, maybe he hasn't read the constitution very well. Because as a matter of state policy, parliament cannot be used to propagate hate. And that is what I'm telling him. And by the way, that is exactly what this bill is Michael, doing. Michael, kindly read Article 39.1. Right. Since you are reading the Constitution, read Article 39.1 oh, 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 right. and 39.2. Sam George, you have your response now. Uh, yes. In terms of assenting the bill, yes. you don't have a good case because of precedence. Uh, recently, we've seen two uh, bills that you've passed into law. Uh, the one that has to do with the uh, death penalty in our criminal law and then the witchcraft accusation bill. You've seen the back and forth on it. As we speak, the president hasn't assented. What makes you think he will assent to this? Well, it's up to the president to choose to assent or not to assent. But if the president is minded that he holds power and trust for the Ghanaian people, and the Ghanaian people overwhelmingly today was a unanimous vote. There was no vote in opposition to the passage of the bill. We represent the people of Ghana. We've passed the bill. We're bringing it to him within seven days. He has seven to 14 days to up append his signature to it. If he chooses not to, he would have to give us tangible reasons. And if his reasons don't make sense to us, we intend to bring it back to Parliament because the Constitution envisages the time that you can have a president who would not be in tandem with the wishes of the people and gives us two thirds. If we get to thirds of Parliament, we will pass this bill into law with or without the president. But the president must bear in mind that his legacy is one that's at stake. He has made commitments to the Anglican Church in the Eastern region when he addressed the clergy there and said that under his watch he would make sure that nothing that promotes LGBTQ is done. There is nothing, there is nothing, there is nothing that is more inhibitable to the promotion of anti-LGBTQ than signing this bill. You understand me? So, the president, I, I hold the view view that I believe he would listen to the will of the Ghanaian people and proceed to sign it. If he doesn't do it, we would exercise our two-thirds majority power in parliament and, and, and pass it into law. Amanda, I have one but, minute. But, Let but me I give it to you to wrap up. Uh, when are you going um, to court? Michael, as I, your group say. I want to clarify. Um, I want to clarify some, George. I Please never do that in one minute. Actually, 
that is making them have mental health. Just the lack of support is informing the statistics you're speaking to. So go back and read it again. Also, I fund my research and I dare you to come out and tell me where you think I get my funding from if you are daring somebody else to come up as well. I'm also surprised to see a whole member of parliament saying that there's no relationship between research, advocacy. Go check all our policies that we have as a country. And the relationship- that, That's not what I said, Aisha. That's not, what I said. that's not no, what I said. That's not what I said. Don't misquote me. I it down. No. Please. You said I said no research is not I, I the same never, as advocacy. Let me have my one minute. You don't so, no, no don't misquote me. If you're going to quote me, if you will quote me, advocacy. quote me correctly. And clearly, I want you to understand that that is the relationship because for a policy, for a lot to be known, there should be- I didn't speak of a relationship, Amanda. Don't set your own questions and answer them. I said there is a difference between research and advocacy. Listen to this audio again when the- when it's over and you will see the mistake that I said well, the difference well, between yeah, advocacy and as a parliamentarian and I don't think that we should make well that's all time will allow us and as this bill has been passed we are monitoring how things unfold we're looking forward to the response of the president who has the ultimate responsibility to assent or not to uh, assent the bill so of course we are watching with keen interest uh, definitely there's more conversations on this topic thank you so much Dr. Amanda Odoi, thank you, Michael Akako, very reverend uh, AJ. I'm grateful for your time. And Sam George, thank you so much for coming to the studio. Viewers, many thanks.